Hi, I'm Jeff Kleiman, and you're watching my series on post-concussion syndrome and following my journey to healing. So here it is, the long-awaited Qigong video. Um, I've talked a lot about Qigong and a lot of my other videos, but I've never really had a chance to sit down and kind of tell this story and really talk about how important Qigong is for me with a traumatic brain injury to rehab and where it fits in my life. So let me tell you the story of this. So basically, back last October, I was in hell. Um, I was really struggling with uh, setback after setback, feeling like I didn't really have the tools, had a good summer because I was out, away from screens, walking, listening to audiobooks, and then I hit the fall and uh, everything started spiraling. Um, in October of last year, I went on like my first solo cruise to try to get away, which was great. Uh, and I kind of got a sense of how important movement was. And then I came home and had some really challenging times, which led to some of my lower times on this journey. So I was trying to figure it out. What do you do during the winter in Boston to move, right? So it's hard to walk outside when it's 11 degrees and blowing or snowy. And uh, the, the things that I used to do, I used to be a weightlifter or used to go to the gym and pers get personal training. Uh, I kept trying to do, and every time I try to do, I'd get a major setback. So finally, you know, it kind of occurred to me, you know, I kind of seem remembering seeing older folks doing Tai Chi here and there. Thought I saw a sign at a place uh, called Healing Harmonies down in Swampscott, which is right near where I live. And uh, so I did a little investigation and I showed up for a Tai Chi class and explained my situation to the woman who ran that uh, the dojo. And uh, she was like, you know what? Why don't you come in for the Qigong class? Softer and gentler. See how you do with that. Then come for Tai Chi. Well, I came in that first day and did an hour of Qigong and um, felt pretty good. It was like, hmm, okay, here's a movement I can do. And then I continued on and I started doing some Tai Chi, but it, but, 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 but it wasn't, the Tai Chi wasn't doing, it was good, but there was something about the Qigong. So um, at the end of last year, I sat down with a woman who, who sort of runs that dojo and, and kind of talked to her about that path and their Qigong and what it was. And I started doing research and uh, started coming up with the fact that the form of Qigong that I was doing was a more martial art focus form of Qigong. Um, it's called the Eight Brocades. It's a wonderful physical form. Um, but I was like, things were happening to me when I was doing my Qigong. I was like sensing stuff and feel, feelings were feeling weird. Like, hmm, you know, when I put my hands together, it kind of feels tingly. And, and there really wasn't a good context to explore from. So... Uh, I downloaded some videos off the internet. Um, I bought a DVD by a woman named Mimi Kido Deemer, who did the eight brocades, but she also did another form called the, the 18 forms. And following her, I got, you know, there's more to explore here. Um, I went on another solo cruise. And this one in January of 20, 2018 um, was pretty bad. Uh, the, the cruise went right through a polar vortex. It was a bad cruise, but I was doing my Qigong every day. I was confined to cabin for like 24 hours because the waves were so bad and I was doing my Qigong. And so I came back from that and was like, okay, there's something here, right? There's some, I gotta keep, I gotta keep investigating this. I gotta keep going. So, um, I discovered that there was a woman locally here in Marblehead uh, who runs a, a, a school called Nourishing Life Qigong. She does Qigong healing and she does Qigong training. So I reached out to her and we had tea. And uh, a few weeks later, I was doing a workshop with her and she was teaching a form called Primordial Qigong. And this was more energy focused. This was something different than the eight brocades. This was something else. It was focusing on energy and it was like, okay, okay, all right, all right, this is, this is pretty cool. So I adopted that as a daily practice and I started seeing real benefits from it. I started seeing just calmer and, and, and whereas I was trying to sit 
and do seated meditation and always my brain's going somewhere, Qigong was giving my brain something to focus on and something to do while I was trying to clear my head. So this all leads to the National Qigong Conference in Asheville in March, March, April of this year. So I, I wrote a scholarship thing, basically threw something out there, said, hey, you know, I'd love to come down to the conference, but you know, I'm not working right now. So, you know, would love it if I could get a pass. And a couple weeks before the conference, they sent me a note, hey, we'd love to give you a pass, come on down. So I flew down to Asheville and the week before was a really challenging week. I was having a tough, tough week. And I'm like, look, hey, if, if, if this Qigong stuff's gonna do it, it's gotta do it when I'm having the toughest weeks, right? It can't just be good when it's good. It's gotta be something more than that. So I went down to that conference and I met a whole bunch of people and I realized that I was being surrounded by people who were dealing with chronic conditions. And I met a woman down there named Bianca Mole who has Parkinson's or had Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease does not get better, right? It's very difficult to control Parkinson's disease. You know, it's a degenerative disease. And here is this woman and she's practicing this form. And I would never have known that she had Parkinson's disease. She wasn't shaking or trembling. She seemed like just, you know, a normal woman. And then I was meeting, I met a guy who has, you know, uh, Zane, who has had, had dealt with uh, Lyme disease. And, and, you know, Zane's moving around and he's dealing with pain, but he's moving around. It's like, wait a second. You know, when I tried to do yoga, I was surrounded by a lot of people in yoga pants. And here I am doing Qigong and I'm surrounded by a lot of people who are healing. And that, that really gave me pause. And I took a whole bunch of different seminars, met a whole bunch, bunch of really cool people. Met a guy named Mike McCloskey who, who, who teaches theology in New York and has a really beautiful, simple form that just sort of reminded me, like, this doesn't have to be complicated. And then I met Mitangu. And I've had the opportunity in my life to meet a lot of really great people. Uh, first with DVD Talk and then Drink Spirits. Man, I've, meet, I've met some people who are you know, captain, captains of their industry, real masters, real masters. I'm, I'm not going to drop names, but I've met some masters in my life. And Mi Tanggu is, is a master of Qigong. They're, they're clearly, unquestionably, this dude is a master of what he does. And the form that he teaches, Wisdom Healing Qigong, uh, is based on a broader form called Zenang Qigong, which was developed in China by this great integrated medicine guy. Uh, before the time of integrated medicine, Dr. Pang was Eastern medicine and Western medicine. And he took a lot of the Eastern medicine tools and he tested them with Western technology. I mean, why not? Why wouldn't you, right? This isn't faith healing. This isn't, you got to believe in this stuff. There's some actual science behind this. And he developed a form called Zenang Qigong, which came to the United States under a couple names because a couple of the people who he trained and teach taught came to the united states they added their touch and uh, so you have uh, zenang you have wisdom healing you have chillel and um all these forms are based on this you know pretty solid common structure um what me tanggu has done is he's added some sound work into this mix that is so effective for dealing with trauma uh i can't i can't even begin to describe how much a tool Wisdom healing, sound healing is, is, is a tool for dealing with trauma. And one of the key things that post-concussion syndrome gives you is a good, healthy dose of trauma. You know, watching the life that you used to have get taken from you by an injury and having to navigate through a world where things hurt is traumatic. Uh, so, you know, I met Mitangu, I studied uh, at his keynote and a couple of other sessions and he did a sound healing and I was bawling my eyes out. I mean, I was crying, I mean, just, just bawling my eyes out. It's like, okay, it's clearly hit a chord and uh, got to spend some time with him, got to talk to him and, um, you know, the dude really knows his stuff. And uh, so I came back and, uh, I transitioned from doing my primordial Qigong to doing Zenang or Wisdom Healing Qigong. And that's the form that I do now. 
And that includes really for me, like three times a day, uh, awakening vitality. I do it in the morning. It's very physical. It's, it's about moving and twisting and bending. And it's, it's given me uh, much more flexibility, much more agility. And it, it has been awesome for balance. And for post-concussion syndrome, mild traumatic brain injury, um, not only are you, should you be thinking about healing now, but balance and injury prevention in the future. I mean, even as you're healing, um, I tripped over some steps down in our basement and I went whoosh and I caught myself. And this is not martial arts I'm studying, right? But my body, as it came from, my arms just went out and I stopped myself. And it could have been a pretty bad spill. And that's what's part of importance of all this is, is really not only healing and, and dealing with the deep trauma and, and, and the physical impairment and all the balance issues, but thinking about the future, right? And building a body that is going to be able to not get easily injured again. Because, you know, look at me back in April, right? I was ready after all this. I was at a point I was ready to put my post-concussion behind me. And I came off a rough wave in August and went right back into dealing with some of the bad issues. Not fun, but you know what? The day after I came off that hard wave, I was doing my Qigong, right? Three times a day, every day, whether I feel like it or not. So I was saying, awakening vitality, moving the body. Then in the middle of the day, I do more meditative work. I do a thing called three centers merge, the standing meditation. Very powerful, very good, really not hard. I do it guided and I don't have to think. And I find that being in that state where I don't have to think about not thinking, I, I, I'm not thinking as much. And that's huge. We'll, we'll get to that. And then finally, at the end of the day, I'm doing something called lift chi up, pour chi down, where I'm connecting with subtle energies, right? So I've got this wonderful, complete practice that I do every day. I don't have to think about it, right? I don't have to figure it out. Every day I have this, this structure. In addition, there's this thing called La Chi, which I'll talk about a little bit, which is like basically sitting with your hands and working with connecting with subtle energy. This is all mind, body, energy connection stuff. It's not religious. It's not faith healing. It's not anything that you have to believe for it to work. It just works, right? It just works. This stuff works, okay? Really, if you, if you sit and do what's called lachi, which is sitting and just basically cultivating energy, and there's some chanting you can do with it or not, if you just do this, right? Start here, right? Your arms absorbing and releasing, absorbing and releasing. You can bring it to where... You need the healing and absorb and re release and absorb. I mean, this is something that helps, right? It helps. So why is all this important for post-concussion syndrome and traumatic brain injury? Well, I'll tell you. Look, you have an injury to the operating system and the computer that runs your whole body, right? In the modern world, we deal with our you know, the gatekeeper to all that, our ego, right? And when you get an injury and that ego's yardstick's broken, it's very difficult for it to let go. How many times have you done something that you know is going to give you symptoms? You know your past cooked. You should stop whatever it is. But that little ego, that little brain, that little thing inside your head goes, no, 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 you got it, you're fine. Well, hey, if you're over, you're over. You're going to pay anyways, right? So in addition to agility and balance and mobility and calmness, you're cultivating your control really over your brain, right? Because the most dangerous thing of traumatic brain injury is becoming a passenger to a runaway dangerous, ego-driven brain. That's the anxiety. Anxiety lives there. Depression lives there. Suicidal ideation lives there. And when you become a passenger to those things, you enter a space that is more dangerous in your healing than falling down again. Being a passenger to those things 
is really, 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 really dangerous. I can't emphasize that. You want to know how dangerous? Go back and watch some of my videos from October. Look at my look at look at some of the not so great happy videos from this last couple of months. Like this is something that's ongoing. It's a daily practice. This is not something that you do once and everything's fine, right? This is a foundation of healing and practicing with your mind and body and the connection between the two and getting control of that broken driver, right? You don't want that to be driving, right? You don't want an impaired driver driving your body, right? So how, like, what do you do? It's your brain, right? Well, part of that is kind of learning how to quiet those things, right? Learning how to quiet them. And that's a, that's a muscle, that's a skill, right? You don't have to be some, you know, Buddhist monk, some Zen monk to get that, right? That's something like everything else. Practice. You practice and 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 you practice every day, every day, every day. Then when you're not practicing and things happen, you have the skill to be able to manage it, right? You have the skill to be able to go, nope, no, no, I'm not, I'm not, no, 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 Shh. quiet, be quiet, right? Be quiet. I don't want to listen to you anxiety. I don't want to listen to you depression. I don't want to listen to you head, right? I can also operate out of other places. You know, one of my favorite quotes going through this whole thing is Brian Eno's quote about the brain. He said, I used to think my brain was the best organ in my body. That is until I realized he was telling me that. You have other organs in your body. You have other ways of interfacing and relating to the world, right? You want you want to see that? Go 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 Google you know baby animal pictures, right? Your brain's not going to be connecting to that cuteness, right? You feel your heart opening up. I mean, how much time do you spend connecting with your heart, right? Right, connecting with your heart with love. It's it's hard when you've gone through trauma. It's it's easy to harden your heart. It's easy to 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 collapse it. Matter of fact, for a long time, I had kind of a collapsed heart. I was kind of walking around like this. It was terrible. It hurt a lot. So, you know, one of the things that I found through all of this is the sound healing. You're focusing your mind into the body using vibrations and you're becoming conscious about what areas of your body things are. You know, you feel crappy today. Where do you feel crappy? Right? You're upset. Where do you feel upset? You're tense. Where is your tension? Right? It, it, getting that connection between the mind and the body. I mean, this not this is not science fiction or anything. Your mind, your body are connected, right? So practicing that connection, working on that connection. Sometimes it's unpleasant. I've had like some old like back injury stuff and and things that were achy, achy pain. I wasn't really paying any attention. I didn't realize I was stiff and sore and feeling bad. Still, years and years later, but. The more aware I've been, the more able I am to let go, to let them release, to give it care, to give it attention. So this is really powerful stuff. I mean, I can't emphasize enough how important Qigong is and medical Qigong. And even more specifically, I'm recommending Wisdom Healing, Zenang, Chilel. Find which teacher in there you like, right? Find out, find the teacher. If you got a local teacher, um, you know, the cheesecenter.com website has teachers listed. Um, there are a couple of other websites, Chilel website, Dow Arts. They're listing of teachers, you know, around the world, right? So first, if you can find one that's local, find a local teacher. It, that, that's pretty, that's, that's number one. If not, there's some great online resources to learn this stuff, online books, online videos and courses and so on and so forth. And I think the expectations that need to be set are, this takes time, right? I'd say, you know, pretty conventionally, it takes 100 days, right? Practicing every day for 100 days. And then in 100 days, you will see a difference. I mean, you want to see a difference? Look at me today in this video. We'll go back to October of 2017 before I started doing Qigong. You'll see some pretty big differences in me, just in general, both physically, just all over. Right? Right? So all I can say is my experience and my experience of this has been pretty profound. Um, it's given me tools uh, on days like there was a day, there was a night 
that I was done. I was in my bed. It was like nine o'clock. I was done. I was done. I couldn't lift myself off of the bed. I was down, tired, exhausted, depressed, and defeated. And I got up and I said, okay, right? If this is ever going to work, right? If this, is, if this is the real deal. If this Qigong stuff is the real deal. It's got to do it now. And I stood up and I did my lift up chi poor chi down and it was amazing, right? It was. So if you follow this series, you know how many things I've tried. This is not a cure all. This is part of the solution, right? But I can say with 100% confidence, this is part of the solution, right? Mindfulness, movement, intention, connecting with the body, and then the most important part of all this, and that is actually healing the trauma, actually working to let go of the trauma, because it doesn't matter. Cannabis, opioids, benzos, whatever other prescription, you know, doctors want to throw at this shit. It doesn't matter what you throw at trauma. If you don't deal with it, right? It's all band-aids. It's all surface. You have to go deeper. You have to actually deal with the trauma to heal. It's essential. It really is. This stuff's huge. So that's Qigong, man. That's what, I, that's what I've been doing. I've been doing it. It's not a panacea. It's not the only thing, but it is the one tool in my tool belt. I know I can pull out every single day and it helps. Every single day it helps. Every single day on my darkest days, on my toughest days, I have Qigong. What I'm doing to heal and what I'm doing to move forward in my life, in addition to just the PCS, because if I woke up tomorrow and I was just perfect, I would still do my Qigong. This is how important it is to me. So thanks for watching.